uh, good evening to everyone. Uh, I want to thank Dr. Sabu for giving me another opportunity. Today, we are going to discuss about the worrying situation of carbon dioxide emission. How things have got getting slightly out of control. We have a common enemy. When I say we, all countries in the world have a common enemy. That is carbon dioxide's excessive emission. And it is causing a lot of uh, problems on the climate front. We're having uh, pattern uh, deviations in monsoon, uh, global warming, etc. We'll touch upon all this. This month, two weeks back, there was a meeting in Dubai of the UN where they come out with new suggestions and directions what countries should do. How India is going to cope with this is what you're going to discuss this. It'll be a very short presentation, uh, shorter than the previous uh, talks of mine. So I, I have got a presentation to upload. I will uh, upload my presentation now. As usual, my presentation is in different parts so that it enables uh, installment viewing later. So I'll share my screen. Hari has come. Hi, Hari. Good evening. I'm just starting. Okay. So the UN has intensified the battle on CO2 emission. And we are going to see uh, how India is going to cope with the new demands which UN has placed on all countries. So a short introduction first. Carbon is the backbone of life on Earth. So we require carbon for life to sustain on, on the Earth. And carbon is in many forms. It is available as minerals, it is available as ores, uh, coal, steel, uh, some contents of it. It is available in plants. Trees, trees have got a lot of carbon inside them. In living beings, you and me have got a lot of carbon inside our body. Similarly, animals also have a lot of carbon inside our body. It is available in oceans also, dissolved to some extent. And as a small percentage in our atmosphere, all the time there is CO2 in our atmosphere. And I want to tell you, the total quantity of carbon in the earth is fixed. It is trillions and trillions of tons of carbon is there in the earth. That is just the same. It can neither be created nor destroyed. But the percentage of carbon dioxide in the atmosphere will keep changing with man-made emissions. So, that is our enemy now. We have to bring this percentage under control. You require carbon dioxide in the atmosphere. A percentage is required. I'll tell you what the percentage is. As only then our temperatures are regulated and Earth will be pleasantly warm and habitable. If you don't have any carbon dioxide in the atmosphere, Earth will become so cold, like ice age. Carbon dioxide layer blocks the radiation from Earth, which is going back to sun and stops it. So Earth require, remains fairly warm, pleasantly warm, so that we can have our life sustained. 100 years ago, carbon dioxide was in 300 ppm. I'm saying parts per million because this is what you see in the paper. So I'm putting that unit. It was 300 ppm. But today it is 420 ppm. And this 420 ppm has caused 
global warming. Why is it 420 ppm? Because a lot of carbon emissions are taking place from many industries, many other sources, from buses, cars, scooters, but, I mean, transports, and other forms of for engineering production. But the carbon dioxide which is emitted, the nature is not able to absorb. Who absorbs it for nature? Trees and oceans and seas. So if we emit more than what they can absorb, the PPM will go up. And the PPM has been progressively increasing over 100 years from 300 to 420. And when it has reached 420, we already see that global warming has increased by one degree. This is the average temperature of the world. One degree it has increased. Now, this global warming is also accompanied by ocean acidification because more carbon dioxide has been absorbed by oceans and oceans are becoming more acidic. It is affecting marine life. It is affecting fish and other plants and weeds which grow in the ocean. So, and the rise of sea level is happening. So, carbon dioxide level has to be less than 420. Scientists say it should be around 400. If it is around 400 parts per million, then that is the limit beyond which you will have all these troubles of global warming and acidification, etc. So our common enemy is percentage of carbon dioxide or PPM of carbon dioxide going beyond 400. And therefore, all countries need to launch action to bring down their emission so that in the world the PPM comes 400 and below. So many new technologies and practices are being developed now to capture carbon dioxide from the atmosphere. Earlier UN was saying don't burn diesel, don't burn coal, carbon dioxide will get emitted. Now they are saying, in addition to that, try to get carbon dioxide from the air, try to remove carbon dioxide air from air by some technique and some technology. This is what UN has suggested now, so we will take this uh, forward and let's see. But before I go there, I want to give you a little idea, some carbon basics, just to understand how this imbalance has come. So carbon basics, I will tell, there is fossil fuel, that is petrol, diesel, etc. There is coal. These are burned by human beings. And CO2 is there in air. As I told you, 420 ppm. Oceans absorb some, trees absorb some. Human beings also uh, exhale carbon dioxide. When you breathe out, it is carbon dioxide. But that quantity is very small. So this is the carbon cycle which is happening in, uh, in our earth. So we have to make sure that what you are burning is less. Therefore, human beings should control the use of fossil fuel and coal. This is what has been told by UN in 2015 when they had a global meet in Paris. And, but it has already gone beyond 400, it's come to 420. And the temperature now is plus 1.2 degrees. So, UN is saying, slow down your emission, reduce your fuel burning. Let us keep the temperature between one and a half and two. UN knows it is not possible to reverse it very fast. So let us keep between one and a half and two degrees. So burn less fossil fuel and coal. That is the thrust which they had given. So now they are saying something more than that control on fuel like diesel, petrol, coal, etc. So let us go it forward. 
So now they are saying all these things when they happen, three steps are important. First, control using the fuel, reduce burning of the fuel, burning of coal. This is what was discussed in 2015 in Paris in a meeting by name COP21. Now they are saying in COP28 at Dubai, while it is burning, have some chemical method to capture the carbon dioxide. That means you're burning fuel, but carbon dioxide, you capture it and take it away somewhere else. We'll discuss that. And third thing which they're saying is, okay, you couldn't capture. It has already gone to atmosphere. Then take it back from atmosphere. So what was in step one in 2015 is now going to step two and step three. Why we are going? What is India's problem in this? How will you get this technology, etc.? We'll very briefly discuss. So in COP21 at Paris, there were green ambitions that we will do all this and control our emission. But this has failed in India. I should tell you that and I will show you some results. We have not succeeded in controlling the emission the way we want. And I will show some data for your information. This is how the temperature has been going for last 70 years. It has been 0.2 degrees more and gone and gone and gone. In 2015, when the Paris meeting took place, it was one degree. Now today it is one and a half degrees almost. So in Paris, there have been discussions on this. 193 countries uh, attended the Paris meeting and they agreed that we will control the gas emissions had gone to more than 54 gigatons. Maximum has been by China, USA, European Union, and then India. So India is the first four for polluting or emitting a lot of carbon dioxide. And as I told you, countries were told to control it. And they said, after five years, we'll take a review. We will look at the result. So I'm going to show you the result after five years after India has started doing this. So India in COP21 in Paris, they said these three things we will do. I, I don't have to go through these uh, details. Then in COP26 at Glasgow, they said we'll instead of three things, we will do five things, increasing the target also. So that also uh, our Prime Minister had committed. I will discuss the results now. Now I am coming to the summary of results. There were four aims for India. So I'll go to aim number one, target number one. Fossil to non-fossil, the ratio should be 60-40 as per Paris meeting, then we said, no, we will do better. We'll make it 50-50. Fossil means petrol, diesel, coal. Non-fossil means solar, wind energy, hydro, nuclear, all this put together. So we said we will do 50-50 in 2021. And now we are going to have even better than 50-50. So very good result. We have been able to achieve. Please remember, we have been able to get good amount of power generated by solar, by wind, and little bit of increase in nuclear, little bit of increase in hydro, etc. So target number one, we are doing very well. Target number two, he said at least 500 gigawatts should come from solar plus wind plus hydro, etc., etc., and we are likely to have 525 by 2030. That also we will achieve by 2030. Third was reduce carbon emission by 1 billion ton. This is what we had said in Glasgow meeting. But by 2022 itself, we have not reduced, but it has increased. Not only our country, other countries also. So what we want to achieve by 
reducing carbon emission, we have not been able to achieve this. It has gone up. I will show you the graph. And they also said emission intensity should be uh, less than 2005 levels by 45% in Glasgow meeting. And we seem to be achieving that. But the fact is, our emissions are, quantity of emissions have increased. Now, I would like to pause for a minute here. Look at target number four. It is so many tons per thousand dollars of GDP. So it is linked to our GDP. If your GDP is increasing, then emission intensity will, emissions will also increase. So if your economy is improving, emissions will automatically increase. So you have to control the total amount of emissions, keeping in mind what your GDP is. So let us look at what happened uh, by 2022, last year. So last year, I put this uh, red line is for uh, uh, Paris Agreement. By last year, I'm sorry, we have 1.5 degrees temperature has gone up for nearly 90 days this year in 2023. It's an average of all over the world. And the emissions have gone to 57 tons. It has increased. You see this graph, the top line. It had a small dip here, but again it has gone up. So today we are emitting, when I say we, I mean uh, world over, we are emitting more than what we were doing earlier. And industries, agriculture, power generation, initially they showed a reduction during COVID period, but now COVID is over almost over the entire world. Industries have started functioning. Agriculture has also started functioning in full scale. I will tell you how agriculture affects it separately. All these and power generation requirement is increased world over. All these have led to higher population. So what we thought will reduce has not happened. And we have already in 2023 about to finish. And we have got only six years to control, bring the emissions down to what we promised earlier. So if all countries do from now onwards what they promised, you will be still having emission much more than what is required for two degrees increase in global warming. I repeat once again, if all the countries from today onwards bring emission control and bring down their carbon dioxide, you will still have in the atmosphere carb enough carbon dioxide to cause two degrees global warming. Today, we are one and a half degrees, and by 2030, we will get to two degrees. So you have to do much more than what Paris decided. Paris had decided some quantities, we have to do much more. And let us see how things go. If you look at the present situation, India is after China, red is China, United States, European Union, and India is just below that. Okay, we can say we are fourth, only 7% of the emission India is causing with 18% population. So per head, it is very, very lower than other countries agree. But the fact is, we are releasing carbon dioxide into the atmosphere, which is causing problems for world over. Uh, the G20 countries are almost uh, transmit, uh, emitting 78% with only 62% population. So while the poorer countries in the world they're only emitting 22% with 38% population. So India is also a developing country. So we have got more population. Per capita may be less. But the fact is, once the carbon dioxide is emitted, it remains in the atmosphere. It will cause global warming. It doesn't look at how many people are there in the country. 
emission has come, it will cause global warming and all other consequential problems. So there is a need for us to control our emission from now onwards. Will it happen in India or not is the question. You look at India's emission. This is India's emission 2016, 17, 18, 19, 21, 22. 2015 was Paris. We are supposed to bring it down, but we are not been able to bring it down. It has been slowly and slowly increasing, right? It, of course, our GDP has also been growing. So there is a need for how to get it back to the earlier levels. If you look at our emissions, and now I'm speaking with respect to India. If you look at our emissions, it is primarily coming from thermal power stations, which is producing electricity, where coal is being burned. So 65% is coming from power stations and industries cost some 20 odd percent and transportation, school, scooter, car, buses, trucks, ships, etc., etc., all put together, aircrafts, all put together, cost the balance. So there is a need for us to bring down the emission primarily from three sectors, power generation, industries, and they are called the hard to abate industries. That means they are very difficult to change their process. They are very difficult. So those industries and transportation. So when economy grows, more power is required. And if your economy is growing faster than the rate at which solar and wind are growing, then your emission will be more. Because you want power. And power can come from coal, solar, or wind. But economy is growing. It requires more power. So if solar and wind are not able to give that much, then coal has to be burned. So India, one of the problems is that coal is still being used even though we are having enough solar and wind because GDP is growing. So let's see some, uh, some more details of that. So, if you want to reduce emission, you have to reduce coal being burnt. In transportation, there is no coal. Cars are becoming electric vehicles, so emission is coming down. Industries, which are hard to abate especially, are going to reduce coal because of green hydrogen. So, they will also come down. So, it is the power sector which is burning coal, is worrying us. So let's dig a little more deeper into that. Is India becoming too dependent on coal? Is a question, single question. Are we too dependent on coal? As says India's coal is, ash content is very high. It produces more carbon dioxide. But that apart, is India too dependent on coal? Can you come out of this? Or will we always be burning coal? Is a question. So India's coal dependency actually has hurt our green ambitions. We are not able to come out of this coal dependency. I'll tell you why. This is India's emission. You see this graph. And this gray portion is coal. This is oil. And the rest of the things which are as marked there. So you find... Coal is actually transmitting more and, I'm sorry, not transmitting, emitting more and more carbon dioxide. Coal is not, coal is not getting used less. It is being used more and more. And I'll show you the data. India's emission is today, in 2022, December is 2.83 billion. So I told it 7%. 65% is caused by burning coal, mostly in thermal power plants and steel plants and refineries, etc. As I told you all this, 24% is by transportation, balanced by natural gas, etc. Now, if you look at our coal consumption, 
in 2020 was 900 ton i'm sorry 900 million tons then became 1000 2030 became 1100 and in 25 it is expected to become 1200 so coal is not going to reduce it's only going to increase so more and more coal being burned is it correct are you going to burn more coal than what is being burned now if you're going to burn more coal obviously it is not for transport there's no transports running on coal these days there are no more trains running on coal so obviously this coal burning is only for power are we getting more power from coal let's look at these details so you find that we have been burning in 2022 1100 tons of coal and 85% of the coal is in thermal plants but steel fertilizer etc account for 10% because they have to burn coal with steam to get hydrogen when green hydrogen comes they will reduce a bit, so emission will come down. But still, power plants will be emitting large amount of carbon dioxide, nearly 1.7. So we have a problem. And if the coal consumption is going to increase in 2025, you will be emitting more carbon dioxide than what you're doing today. So we are not actually in sync with what is required. I will show you some more details. This is a very interesting data, which is from Ministry of Power. Ministry of Power has calculated that in 2022, that is the year which has gone by, we had 415 gigawatts of power. And this 415 gigawatts of power had 238 from coal plus natural gas and 177 from what is in green color is non-fossil. And what is in orange color is fossil. Fossil was generating more power than non-fossil. But 2030, we want 817 gigawatts of power. This is what the Ministry of Power says in their report. We want 817 gigawatts of power for our economy to uh, be at some level. I'll tell you the level, uh, what will be in 2030. So, solar is increasing, wind is increasing, bio gas is, uh, bio mass is increasing, hydro is increasing, nuclear is increasing, but coal is also increasing. Gas also gas is almost same 24-25. So we are unable to come out of this coal even in 2030. We will be burning more coal than today. More carbon dioxide emission will take place from India between now and 2030. So we may not really support a reduction in global temperature. So let's look at some more details of this. Now, I told you all these details. This is from Ministry of Power's report. And unless we do something about coal consumption being reduced, that means you speed up your solar, speed up your wind, and nuclear. We spoke about nuclear step back. Unless all these increase, your coal cannot, consumption cannot, come down. So, government strategy today, as of now, as we speak, is that let's continue on coal. Because economy has to grow. We will look at global emission, CO2 emission, a little later. After, instead of 2030, we'll look at maybe 2040 or 35. So, let's look at those details. So, if you look at coal consumption of India, this is a study done by uh, Tata Energy Institute. In 2035, coal will reach a maximum of 1,500 million tons. Uh, please remember, sometime back, I showed you a table. In 2025, it will be 1,200. 
it will increase, increase, increase. By 2035, it will reach 1,500 million tons and then start coming down. So our coal consumption will come down the lower value only after 35. And it will take 15 years for it to come down to 1,000 million tons which is sort of acceptable for us from the level of consumption. Now, there are two issues here. UN has said now, phase down your coal, not phase out, phase down. That means slowly you increase your coal. India seems to have convinced in the UN meeting that we can do it only by 2040 and not before that. So you will have to pair with our carbon dioxide emissions till 2040, and then slowly we will be able to face down our coal. So in the ministry's, uh, Ministry of Coal's uh, uh, press information uh, note, they say it will peak by 2035, which I showed in this graph, and then only it will reduce. Right. Now, these trends show our green ambitions have become gray realities. It is not possible for us to reduce emission till 2035 to 40 period, only we can come down. Now, these were all discussed uh, in Dubai, where it was decided that we will attack this problem in a different manner. We will attack, that's what I said, it is intensifying the battle. So instead of just reducing your coal, reducing your diesel petrol, we will look at some other technology by which global warming is reduced. CO2 emissions, if you emit more, global warming will increase. So let us look at some other technologies by which CO2 in the atmosphere is reduced. So I'm going to discuss that. So in COP28 meeting at Dubai, they are going to look at the gray results of Paris, which has not worked very well. So in COP28 at Dubai, they took stock of all the climate goals and they highlighted that all countries should make, definitely meet their Paris agreement and increase solar and wind much more. That means you produce more electricity by solar and wind. Therefore, there's no requirement for you to burn coal, which is not the case in India. We'll have to burn coal and bring green hydrogen as early as possible for your steel industry, for your fertilizer, for your refineries, etc. So that as such, the refineries will uh, output also will slowly reduce because diesel cars and petrol cars will go out of the market in another 15 years time, 10 to 15 years time. So the focus was increase solar and wind, bring green hydrogen as early as possible. Now with this, also uh, some countries have developed a new type of aviation fuel for aircrafts by which the carbon emission is reduced. This fuel has already been tried out in a flight recently, and the aircraft flew across the Atlantic Ocean with a new fuel. And this fuel also is likely to come to all aircrafts after the aircraft engines have been slightly modified in another five years' time. So by 2030, it is not only electric scooters, electric cars, hydrogen-run uh, cars, but also you will have a new type of aviation fuel for aircraft. As such, new type of fuel has come for ships. So ships, aircrafts, road transport, trucks, they'll all be using different type of fuel by 2030. Uh, maybe about 30 percentage of the population of the cars and trucks, etc. will be using it. Slowly, slowly, that numbers will increase. And petrol and diesel will get slowly phased down in another 15 years' time. So if you're buying a new car, just remember, 
uh, petrol may not be a popular fuel after 2040. Right. So we are looking at our worries on coal. Now, COP28 also decided that beginning of end of fossil fuel has started. They said we have started the beginning to end the fossil fuel. Slowly end petrol, diesel, coal, slowly. How slowly will depend upon countries, how well they contribute, I'm sorry, how well they cooperate. But the beginning of the end has started world over, now onwards. So those countries which are producing oil and which are oil rich, they like to re-strategize their economy. But they got time. In another 10, 15 years time, this fossil fuel will come to a very low level of consumption. Second, very important, countries were told to cut emission by 43% by 2030. With respect to what you did in 2019. So we will see a little more on this as far as India is concerned. If you cut 43%, then we can keep global warming within one and a half degrees, plus one and a half degrees. Will India meet it? Will China meet it? Will USA meet it? It's a very broad discussion. But I will tell you only about India. Will India be able to meet this? 43%. They said renewable energy should be tripled. What you were doing in 2019, let us say, was X gigawatts. Then by 2030, make it 3X, three times. Energy efficiency to be doubled. So there are three things which have come from UN now. 43% cut, renewable energy to be tripled, energy efficiency to be doubled. We'll discuss a little bit on this in the next slide. Face down of coal, I've already told you. They've also created a loss and damage fund. It's about $700 million have already been contributed by uh, many countries, but 40 odd countries. And this is to help developing countries and underdeveloped countries if they suffer damage due to climate changes. They will be compensated by this fund, loss and damage fund. This is a great beginning which has happened in the COP28 so that this fund has been created. People could... Uh, I don't know whether our floods in uh, Tinnevelli or uh, Tutukudi, etc., which happened last week, is eligible under this loss and damage fund. I'm not sure. But for developing and underdeveloped countries, this will be uh, given for climate-induced disasters. And they said we'll review the results in 2028. How these new conditions, three new conditions, 43%, tripling renewable energy and doubling efficiency. Each country was asked to make its own uh, plan to do it. So let us look at what is happening. Before I come to details, I want to tell you India has been doing well. You remember the four targets we had, which I showed you out of three we are successful, one we could not meet, that is regarding carbon emission, based on Paris Agreement. So India was 31st in 2014 on compliance to the various requirements of UN. That's called climate change performance, how well we were fighting the climate changes. India was four, 31st, now India 7. So India has done very well uh, in the battle against climate change. Yes. Of course, we did not, we we foresaw that we could not meet carbon emission uh, target. Now the new conditions have come. So let us see how the new conditions are going to be. So I've shown uh, in a slide, COP28 said, triple your renewable energy by 2030. India was producing 177 in 2019. It will meet 525. So we will meet, tick. We will meet that condition. Energy efficiency to be doubled. What is energy efficiency? That you should use an appliance which takes less power. So that 
for the same job, you take less power. So that's called energy efficiency. I think government, Ministry of Power has introduced LED lights all over India. They are going for smart meters. I understand smart meters installation has started in five, six states. It is going to pick up speed very soon. And then the last six, seven years, or maybe 10 years, Bureau of Electrical Energy has been certifying your appliances. The sticker which is there on your refrigerator, washing machine, microwave, music system, all these have been given some certificate how efficient are their performance with respect to energy. And BE has been doing a good job by bringing in all these measures, LED, smart meters, certification by BE, we have improved our energy efficiency. Now, I don't know whether it will get doubled by 2030. I think a report will come soon from the Ministry of Power, uh, what they will achieve by 2030. As of now, we are in the correct direction. But let's wait for the report to Ministry of Power to quantify how much energy efficiency change will happen. So the first condition tripling we have met, doubling of energy efficiency, we wait for the report. Now we come to the third, which is the last one in quantitative terms. Reduce 43% emission. Now, in 2030, India's GDP as per a separate study is expected to be 7.3 trillion. Today, we are around 3.7, uh, nearing 4. It is supposed to become 7.3 by 2030. And if you consume less than 1300 billion tons of food you consume 1300 less than 1300 and you get this gdp then you will achieve why i am saying this is this emission intensity is so many kilograms of carbon dioxide per dollar of gdp so if your gdp is increasing then you get a higher uh, amount of CO2 emission permissible. So if India's GDP reaches 7.3 with only 1300 million tons of coal, then you're okay. But I had told you earlier, Tata Institute, which have done the study, I'll go to that slide. Tata Institute, which has done the study earlier, had shown it will go to 1500. So you will not meet 43%. So there is a need for us to look at how you are able to make energy efficiency more than double so that you take less power and therefore less coal. So the way we have to tackle is more solar, more wind, so that it is more than triple. Energy efficiency more than double so that you take less power, therefore less coal. So, we have to remember this. We have to achieve 7.3 trillion with 1300 million tons. If you achieve only 6 trillion GDP with 1300, then you are not achieving this goal. I am not going to the mathematics of this, uh, which I have done separately, uh, but it is uh, available that it, it is a calculation which I have done and uh, I am not going to go into details how I have calculated this. It is available in the presentation. If somebody wants to spend some time on it, separately you can look at it. Last point is phase down of coal. It is qualitative. From 2030, I've told you, it's not going to happen. We will minimum require 2035. But if you do one, two, three very well, then we will be able to bring down coal from 2035 and not 30 as you wanted. So what are the other ways you can capture CO2? All this which I had said till now is to control CO2. That means don't burn. Now world is looking at other methods of 
capturing CO2 or removing CO2. These both are different. I'll explain to you in a couple of slides. What is being analyzed is you got a factory where you're burning, let's say, uh, coal. When coal is burned, the exhaust is taken through some tank, through some tank where there is alkaline solution. So carbon dioxide is agitated through the alkaline solution, what is called scrubbing. They scrub the carbon dioxide through a lot of tubes inside the tank which is filled with alkaline solution and carbon dioxide will get neutralized, right? It, it may get neutralized and settle down as sediment. Or you go for some other method, which I'll explain to you separately. You take out the carbon dioxide from, from that exhaust, which is coming. So only clean exhaust will, will go, like it's shown here. And all the carbon dioxide, which is coming here, you store in containers, transport it to depleted mines, some depleted oil wells. There you go and store them there. That means store them below ground. It may be slow, store them below sea. All these are being looked at as one of the options for taking away carbon dioxide from exhaust gas. Capturing the carbon dioxide, which is the exhaust gas. So this, as I told you, we have to scrub it, then store it, and take it away to some place uh, where it can be dumped. You can use CO2 for uh, some products. If you want to make soda, you request CO2. The fizz from soda comes from CO2. So there are some small uses for CO2. CO2 is also used for uh, uh, firefighting devices. So all these places you can use CO2, but there's a limit to which you can use the CO2. Much of it will have to be stored in containers and dumped uh, underground or under the sea. But the important thing is factory's exhaust is cleaned. But this requires a lot of money, a lot of equipment. You know, what I told you about scrubbing, this has been done board ships in the last four or five years. When International Maritime Organization brought a new rule that only so-and-so type of fuel can be used on the ship's engine, companies were asked to modify their engine and fuel system. Or you can run an old, in, old fuel the old engine or the old fuel, but you should remove CO2 to a certain level from the exhaust. So ships have fitted inside the ship, tanks which have got scrubbers where the exhaust system is scrubbed and then it is neutralized and taken away to uh, either as a sediment or as a gas to some other tank and then uh, handed over to uh, in the harbor when they come back to harbor. So this is a technology which is which has already been tried out on board ships. But when you want to do it in a factory, it has to be much bigger and it will be more expensive. But the technology remains the same. Scrub the exhaust, neutralize the acid out of that and remove the CO2 and then uh, balance can be released to the atmosphere. The second aspect is very interesting. You can remove CO2 from air by afforestation. This we know. You plant more trees, they will absorb carbon dioxide. That is one. Two is you burn trees, dead trees, huh? in controlled conditions with less oxygen. So you will get something like a charcoal. And since you have burned it in less oxygen, carbon dioxide is not produced. So it's called uh, another method. It's called biochar. It is uh, like charcoal, but CO2 is not emitted much. This is another method. 
The third method is allow the ocean to absorb more. How in oceans you grow seaweed. Seaweed has got a high efficiency in absorbing carbon dioxide. Seaweed is also used as a vegetable in many exotic uh, dishes, especially in the Southeast Asian countries. So you grow seaweed, grow other organisms, allow other organisms to absorb carbon dioxide and make sure the ocean is able to uh, absorb more than what without getting acidified. So that is the third method. The fourth method was what I told you earlier, purify in the factory and take out. The fifth method is, I find it very, very strange that such an expensive method can be suggested. That means on the ground, you put some chemicals in the open field. That chemical will re react with carbon dioxide and the carbon will come to the ground in another form. So carbon dioxide reacts with that chemical and the carbon in a new form of chemical compound will be lying on earth. This is a very expensive way, but uh, uh, technologies are trying to be developed for this enhanced weathering uh, of uh, this also called uh, carbon mineralization. They're looking at various ways by which carbon does not exist as carbon dioxide. Let it go to oceans a little bit more. Let it go into the trees through afforestation. Let it go to the ground through uh, carbon sequestration and store it underground. Let it get converted to charcoal without with too much of oxygen being taken. Different technologies are being uh, attempted and so far, which is the one which India will do is not very clear. But I can tell you that afforestation is something which we are progressing in a big way in the country. But that will not be enough to absorb the emissions which are coming out of our uh, thermal plants and factories. So we will have to look at other uh, ways of doing it. Some time back I told you, Agriculture is one way by which now studies have revealed don't till the soil. That means don't plow the soil. If you plow the soil, then the carbon which is lying at a lower level will come on top and react with oxygen and become carbon dioxide. You don't see it, but it's going to happen. So they're saying grow those crops which requires less tilling. That means don't go for uh, three crops in, the, uh, crops in a year, go for two crops in a year so that you don't have to till the ground three times, do it only twice. So different techniques and technologies are being talked about. Now, our biggest carbon sink, that means you sink the carbon, is ocean, soil, I told you about soil, and plants. And the techniques which have been talked about other than what I told you. Sometime back I told you about uh, this technique. Now there is another technique which is being talked about this. Sun's radiation, you reflect it back by some small percentage. You reverse the sun solar radiation back to space. And thereby, the amount of solar energy which reaches Earth, which is reflected as infrared, causing global warming is reduced. So experiments are going on for solar radiation management. So I don't know how, how this will finally fructify, but many work is going on. As I told you about agricultural reduced tillage, seaweed farming, I told you, to enhance carbon dioxide absorption, aviation fuel, I've already told you about. And all these are being attempted in different countries. But I want to tell you in China, Today, there are more than 100 projects which are at experimental stage or prototype stage to capture carbon dioxide from their industries. To my knowledge, we haven't started anything on this front, but I'm sure something will start very soon uh, on this.
Now, with this, I come to the end of my presentation. So let me come to the conclusions. Historic Paris Agreement in 2015 gave us a lot of green ambitions. We all thought that just by controlling the fuel, we will be able to grow economically and reduce carbon dioxide and reduce global warming. And when we try to do this, we realize you cannot get economic growth without emission. And once you have the emission, you will have global warming. So the reality has been gray. It was discussed in COP28 at Dubai, who have come out with some new guidelines and targets how to move the global warming between one and a half and two degrees by 2030. And they have set some goals for each country. As I told you, phase down of coal, move away from fossil fuel, tripling your renewable energy, reducing emission by 43%, and pursue technologies to capture and remove. And some of this we may not be able to achieve. They have also created a loss and damage fund for helping uh, developing countries and underdeveloped countries. India, which has moved the last nine years very well in the battle on climate control, which has moved from seventh, uh, moved to seventh position from 31st position, is all set to achieve tripling renewable energy, doubling efficiency. But reducing emissions by 43% will have to happen only if our GDP crosses $7 trillion and consumption of coal is less than 1,300 million tons. If these two conditions meet in 2030, then we can meet this goal. Otherwise, we will be emitting more carbon dioxide than what we are permitted for the GDP we have. In, apart from this, we also have to look at the new technologies which are being uh, studied and experimented and tried out in many countries, and we'll have to see what is suitable. So what I have told you today is that our battle for CO2 emission control from control, it has become control plus capture from plus remove. The battle has become more intensified. World over, India also will have to pitch the battle in this manner. But for us, our enemy at this point of time is coal. And we are not able to live without coal producing electricity. So we have to find ways and means of increasing solar and wind more than what you have planned and increasing the efficiency more than double so that we require less power and less coal. If you can achieve it, then we will be able to move from seventh position further down and show the rest of the world that we are winning the battle against global warming by our contribution. Ladies and gentlemen, thank you very much. Uh, I wish you all and your families a very happy new year, 2024, because this is my last uh, talk for 2023. And perhaps in 2024, the new year, the first month, we'll meet again with another topic. Till then, thank you very much. Jai Hind. Thank you.